Welcome back to my animal education series. Today we are underground at Merrimack Caverns, and cave tours are popular around the country and the world. But have you ever thought about what is down there with you? Today we're going to be meeting up with one of the tour guides to talk about his job here at the caverns and some of the animals you can find here. So let's go meet our host. So now I'm here with Steven, and what do you do here at Merrimack Caverns? I work as a tour guide. I take folks through the cave, show them different formations, talk about history and uh, geology, animals when we do run across some of them. Uh, some of the animals we may run across are uh, bats. We call one of them Lonesome Charlie. We think he tells bad jokes and they kick him out of the colony. But uh, Others, salamanders. I have seen crickets. Uh, mice, one of the more scariest animals in the cave, frogs. Yeah, you get one of those screamers and you're in the dark head to a light switch and it jumps in the water, it goes ramp and jumps in there. Yeah, your heart rate goes up to 150 beats a minute. So what's one of your favorite things about working in the caves? The thing I, I say it's beautiful. Right, the thing I like is uh, I love caves. I am a geologist, so you know, rocks is kind of my thing. Also, you know, talking to people from especially all over the world, and you learn about different things about their culture and stuff like that. So I find that real interesting. And uh, you know, you retire and you want to do something that you enjoy, and also get exercise and, and stuff like that. So it's pretty, pretty nice. And what did you major in in college to like, have a like a job like this? Well, I actually majored in geological engineering. I worked for the Bureau of Land Management in Farmington, New Mexico for uh, you know, doing oil and gas development on federal and Indian land. And I did that for 34 years up there. And then you said you retired and now you're here? Yes, yeah, so I retired and this is where I grew up was Missouri and I went to the Missouri, uh, it was called UMR at the time, University of Missouri at Rolla, now they call it the, science of, or the School of Science and Technology. That's where I went to school to learn about that. So, so of course, there's also the different animals in caves. And what kind of animals would you find like, permanently in the cave? Permanent animals are like the salamanders. There's two kinds of salamanders: a uh, black one and an orange with black spots. Now, these uh, are, I'm told, are blind, and uh, but they are very colorful. Now, there are cave fish. There are two kinds of species of those. There's a catfish as well as a perch. Now they have no coloration, have no eyes. Most of the time they congregate underneath the bat colony because that's a source of food. The insects eating that bat poop fall in the water, well they probably eat the bat poop too. Uh, other insects like I mentioned, uh, there are crayfish, I have seen one of those, they're also colorless. And uh, other worms and other aquatic insects and stuff in the water. Now I'm told there are uh, salamanders, uh, besides salamanders there are scorpions in here, there are uh, spiders and centipedes and stuff. I have, I've seen the spiders once and uh, I have seen the crickets. The interesting thing about the cricket was things about like the size of a grain of sand but the antenna must have been like two, three inches long on it. And it was sitting on top of one of the flag mites and it stayed there for several days and then moved on. So but it was pretty interesting. So which room are we in now? This is called the jungle room. And as you can look around, it's beautiful. And I know nothing about any of this. I just know it's really cool. Well, the material is called calcite. This area of the cave has a lot more limestone. And limestone when it dissolves in carbonic acid, which is rainwater absorbent uh, carbon dioxide forms that acid, dissolves the rock, and then when the water evaporates, you're left with a precipitate called calcite. First thing, little tiny formations are called soda straws. And as the name implies, they're hollow. The water will flow through the center. Time, plug off and fill up with rock. Force the water to flow on the outside, then it becomes a stalactite. Now the water flows over the stalactite that falls on the ground, it's called stalagmite. Time, they run into each other, form a column, a pillar, 
what are some of the other animals that you find here in the caves that aren't permanent residents? Now, some of the that aren't permanent residents, uh, we did have uh, one of my tours that got up to the wine room, and there was something flying around there. I thought it was a bat, but once it landed, it was a redhead or woodpecker. Now, that room does have a 70 foot shaft, and apparently the bird got in that way, got into the dark, got disoriented. And then once the lights come on, it kind of looked around and said, oh, okay, and we went right back out. And we hadn't seen it since. But I understand there have been other birds in the cave. Uh, they have seen a, a salamander, it's an outside one that probably came in to do one of those floods. That's a black one that had yellow spots on it. That one uh, was kind of in a place we couldn't get to it, it did finally perish. What would be some of the other adaptations that animals have? Well, the clay, cave fish, for instance, they stay basically in that area where that bat colony is because they know that's a source of food. And they're being blind. Now they feel the water, movement in the water, and that's what they go after. Now the other adaptations of the fish themselves, they have no coloration, have no eyes, because obviously you can't see anything, and they don't need eyes, they don't need colors. So they basically look white. Now they do have a kind of a pinkish hue to them because of their blood. Uh, the crayfish are the same way. They don't have the colors like the crayfish you might see out in the stream, out in the Ozark somewhere. These are also white in color. Uh, the salamanders are blind, but they still maintain their color. They may not have been here as long as the fish and some of the insects and the crayfish. And maybe in time they will become white. You know, generations upon generations. And they have no need for camouflage because they can't see anything. So yep. they, they don't need They to can't see and color. nothing can see them, so they don't need any camouflage. And then my dad and I were wearing like pretty bright colors and when it was total darkness we couldn't see each other. So no predator is gonna see from any distance no. is animals. You have to use uh, your sense of smell, your feel. It's kinda of like the cricket I mentioned earlier. It had the antennae that were, you know, like two, three inches long. Had this little thing is the size of a grain of sand. You know, they have an antennae that was that long, and mainly that's for feeling around, so they, because they can't see. So that's another adaptation, because most insects you see, they have maybe an inch long or something. Well, something that's small would probably win maybe a half inch or something, where this thing is like three inches long. It's just the kind of animals that you find out here in these caves and caverns are like super interesting. Like not only do I find caves and caverns super interesting because they're beautiful and I don't understand them at all, but I just appreciate the beauty of them. And just the animals that are down here, they adapt completely differently than animals above ground. They have to like deal with um, all these different formations in the water, different, and you said it stays at the same temperature here. It stays the same temperature all year round. So they don't have to adapt with like winter and. Like weather no. changes because there's no weather in here. No. Except for when it floods. But yeah. That's an exception. Change, but but uh, yeah, during the they don't have to. The, the ones that are in the cave stay. Now the fish and stuff obviously have to adapt to because the, the bats aren't bringing the food in anymore. Yes. And the insects will probably be eating that. And at a time where it's going to be less and less, so the fish will have to adapt. There's going to be a you know, you know instead of feast, it's now it's going to be famine. So there's going to be feast, famine, cycles through the cave. So they have to adapt to that. Well, thank you so much for talking about the animals down here and kind of what you do here You're welcome. at Merrimack Caverns. And if you guys enjoyed this week's episode, don't forget to leave a big thumbs up down below, subscribe to my channel, and also check out my Instagram, at callshirk. As always, I'll see you next week.